I suppose earthly is not exclusive to human existence, but refers to any organism on this planet, including worms, insects, ladybugs, trees, plants, any life on earth. As humans have been too obsessed with our interactions about industry, politics, business, we seem to forget underneath where we stand, there are creatures and the earth beating to keep everything alive. Of course, the sun and the moon are the ones protecting the creatures from death. Life continues, and us humans, majority of us are fools. This show is about the things that our Almighty Creator had given us, which cannot be measured by monetary ideals. This is not about a pandemic, but rather awareness of the importance of our natural resources. So, earthly paradise neglected. Uh, earthly paradise was actually hatched by Raul Arellano. Uh, it wasn't hatched by me. Uh, he, he just called me in to work with him as a co-curator. Because, uh, you know, uh, Raul Arellano's works are kind of in that mold, you know, the earthly paradise uh, image, you know, nature. Because he's also into plein air painting, uh, on-the-spot painting, outdoor painting in the, amidst nature motifs. And that was probably what his intent was at the beginning. The title uh, Earthly Paradise can be uh, interpreted visually in different ways and styles. Uh, using different media, art materials, and uh, in the exhibit, it became interesting as we can see figurative works, abstract pieces, and uh, installation works. I actually enjoyed curating this particular exhibition. I uh, also appreciate the beautiful space of Altromondo putting together interesting, diverse, and uh, varied artworks. Um, I can say that uh, this was another learning experience for me. I had the privilege of uh, interacting with the participating artists whom I finally got to know. We were at a party at Henry Frijas' place when I asked Pablo Biglangawa if the idea of an early paradise group show is feasible since everyone post-lockdown agreed that people need to start relying on earth more because during the pandemic the city pretty much cannot help anyone and then but this was early october before uh, the brouhaha about the elections uh, came forth um when it entered the seat it, it entered the picture we had this conversation about uh are we really going to pursue the, the original meaning of the concept phrase, you know, earthly paradise? And he said something like, no, it's, it's not going to be according to my definition of the concept phrase. It has to be each artist um, pursuing his own take on the concept phrase what earthly paradise would mean to him. And I kind of attached the whole thing into the zeitgeist, into what was going on in, in the, in the uh, election atmosphere. So I said, um, why don't we treat it like a debate issue? Every artist is a candidate. So each artist would be free to um, interpret the concept phrase according to uh, come up with his own definition of the concept, concept phrase. Initially, the concept 
is an open show where some filmmakers and sculpt- sculptors can also submit their work. But later, it became mostly just interpretations in visual form and it is also equally effective. It is special compared to other shows we've done because of its timely advocacy. What is uh, the message of the show? Well, appreciating the world around us, the world we live in, being a part of it, how we coexist, and uh, be able to listen, look, feel what is around us, how we take care of ourselves and our environment. I happen to know that the artists involved in the show come from various uh, tastes. Uh, is that the right word? Tastes or political inclinations or, or personal inclinations. So that would be a good mix for, for something, for a show like this. Because usually um, a show would be, would come up with a theme, right? And the curators would impose themselves on the theme, impose their own takes. Uh, this is what the show is about. This is how we define things. And you have to fit in into that, into that mode. Um, this is different because this is kind of like a political debate. Uh, every, we have a phrase, a concept phrase, and each artist would have to come in with his own take, whether it's a social liberal take or a neoliberal take on the concept phrase or a mysticist's take or a religious man's take uh, or a feminist's take. On, on the concept phrase. And the more varied the personas, I, I wish this show was a bigger show than this one. Uh, my advice to fellow artists, observe, wonder, and perceive. If that is not enough, wonder. Advice to fellow curators, I am the one who could use advice from Sir Nestor. As for others, create a show with standard and substance. Uh, an artist's job is to create if each one of us will be allowed to just focus on creating and not worry about another of ad, about other aspects that had nothing to do with creating art like sales targeted marketing and global promotion. I am sure the industry will produce more artists of finest quality. I've been into the art scene for the past 50 years, exhibiting, curating, and teaching young minds. For me, what is most important is to love what you are doing be serious in your art and uh, to look at things freely and imaginatively like in the eyes of a child. Be observant of the things around you. Read a lot. Experiment. Be open-minded. Keep looking. Notice patterns. uh, Make connections and uh, Use all of your senses. My advice to fellow curators. Curation in art involves uh, selecting artists whose works would fit a certain theme or idea for a planned uh, specific exhibition. The uh, curator interprets the different artworks and uh, put them together to arrive at a uh, visually mm, interesting relationship of art forms. 
Mahirap mag-advice sa ibang artists kasi usually each artist would rather advise <laughs> than get and then take an advice from another artist. Um, except maybe young artists. Uh, if I were a teacher and I have artist students, I would advise them to create artworks that are as if the, the, the piece that they're working on today, right now, is going to be the only artwork that's going to be left in a, in a fire, for instance. And it should be it should be the work that they'd be happy to, to see, you know, sur- surviving the fire. Because it, it should be, it should be the one that represents the most. I kind of like, uh, I would put it like, you know, in, in encyclopedias, you have uh, an article about an artist and an article about a work of art from that artist. It's not as if every work that an artist does would be deemed worthy of an encyclopedia article, right? Uh, One has to be uh, knowledgeable and uh, passionate in uh, staging art pieces in a specific place. In uh, assembling the works, the... uh, Curator must be uh, respected, in my opinion, respected in his or her choice of space. He or she should be given the freedom to choose where he will place or install a specific artwork in relation to the whole exhibition. Um, this is the, to have a successful integrated and holistic exhibition that will strengthen the theme or idea of that particular show. If I'm to, if a young would-be curator is going to ask me how to curate a show, I would tell him to treat a show as if it's an essay. Now, in, in, in Philippine art culture at the moment, when you when you use the word curate, uh, who's, who's curating your show? Usually, what I mean is the person who would arrange the paintings on a wall. You know, who the here? I want this painting up there, and, and so on and so forth. But curating is more than that. It's actually it's like writing an essay. Um, and you know what they say in literature. I also do some literary stuff. If you have nothing to write about, then what's the point in writing about something? Would you write about? Uh, would you write an essay about just about anything for the hell of writing? Of course you won't, right? Unless you're into that kind of stuff, you know, the ballet kind of kind of thing. Same with, I think every show should be an argument. Every show should be, it could even be a kind of rebellion, I guess. Uh, That that would be the most radical departure for coming up with a show. Actually, um, artists, art curators, writers, art critics, collectors, Art galleries and uh, art museums are one in uh, making the art uh, scene alive and prosperous. We're actually one in uh, encouraging and in promoting the interest of the public, the society, and in the arts. Ultramondo has been active in uh, supporting and uh, promoting art exhibitions for uh, budding and uh, experienced artists alike. Promoting discourse in art 
it's not gonna be enough. Because you could actually spew out a million words about a show, about an event, about a work of art, about an artist, and still come up with zero uh, element from the art community listening to you. <laughs> you know? So it's, it's not gonna be enough. This, this course is not gonna be enough. You have a lot of reviews, but how do you know if anyone is reading, reading them? Every show that you go to, there's a write-up on the wall. How many people do actually read them or, or care, even when they do read them, care about what they're saying? I think the way to promote art is to instigate what's always been the heart of art development through art history. Um, the reason why artworks continue to be valued in certain art communities is because they're talked about. And the only way by which you could continue to talk about art pieces is if you allow debates, if you allow, uh, you know, even angry words to be exchanged, you know.